God bless you, my friends. This is your host, Evangelist James Spike, with the Victorious Faith Broadcast. We want you to listen to March 16th Revival at the Spoken Word Church as we were there. This is part two of the type of faith that produces miracles. Two days after my birthday, and oh, what a time we had. So listen, stay tuned to what the Lord has to say. Be blessed is my prayer. This is going to be part two of our message. Amen. Amen that we've been preaching here today. This is going to be part two. The type of faith that produces miracles. The type of of faith that produces miracles. Amen. Now, just quickly to review uh, what we have been over. What we have been over is, is that the word faith, pistis, means firm persuasion, Amen. a conviction based on hearing. What is believed and the contents of belief. Amen. The contents of belief. That's what we get from the Greek. The first point we went over is that the devil is always defeated. Amen. Amen. Always defeated. Amen. Christ has power over the grave, Amen. over hell, and over death. He has no power, no say-so in any of those areas. Our next point is, is that Christ gave authority pre-resurrection. Prior to the resurrection, the Lord was able to anoint 12. Nobody has any problem with the 12. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in a bunch, and Judas too. But oh, when we get down to the 70, now we got all kind of theological debate about the 70. But in my mind, if the Son of God anointed 12, he can anoint 70. And then in my mind, if God can anoint 70, he can anoint whosoever will. Let him come and call on the name of the Lord. Because my God has no limitation. Somebody said his name was almighty. Amen. Well, I'm going to preach this all over again. So then we went to Mark chapter 16 Amen. and we reviewed that this calling that was on the 12, that was on the 70, is now to whosoever shall believe it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Then we looked at miracles that happened post-resurrection. Acts chapter 3, the healing of the lame man. Philip the evangelist when he was sent to Samaria. Amen. Special miracles were done by the hand of Paul. Amen. And the miracles that are happening today because the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that our God is the same yesterday, today, and, for, and forever. He has not changed. He said, I am the God and I change not. Amen. The next point that we went over is we talked about the degrees of faith that reside in a man's heart. Now, if a man wants to live in a state of faithless or in unbelief, God will give him to do that. We found that in Mark chapter 4 and 40, Luke 18 and 8, and Luke 8 and 25. Now, the other condition of the heart is when a person has little faith and their faith wavers. And the Bible said, a man that wavers in his faith, let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. 
Amen. A double-minded man is not going to receive anything from the Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those that come to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Glory to God. I feel the anointing right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The third point is what we're going to be talking about today. Faith that produces miracles. Faith that produces miracles. We went over that yesterday. We saw that there were people that Jesus labeled, and he said, great faith. If you remember the woman that was in pain for 12 years, doctors couldn't do anything for her. But she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And virtue left the Lord, and he said, who touched me? The disciples said, they all touched me. There's a thousand people. Said, what are you talking about? They all touch. He said, no, somebody has made a demand upon my presence. Who touched me? Amen. It was that woman. There's another example in the Bible. Jesus was sent to the Jews. But it was this woman, and she was out of order. And she was seeking a miracle for her family. And he said, well, don't you know that I was sent to the Jews? He said, but yeah, I'm just a dog. I'll just take, we'll fall off the table. And he said, great is your faith. Go your way. Everybody's healed in your house. Can you say amen? You know, is it something how a person, amen, that uh, is not in the right class, is not the right color, but yet they can receive from God? Hallelujah! God is no respecter of person. Jesus and the Holy Ghost, they might be working over here, but if you can get a hold of God, he'll be working where you are. Can you say amen? It doesn't make any difference. Hey, hallelujah. And that's how revival starts. Revival break out in one area, and somebody gets on fire. God does the exact same thing in other areas. It just bounces on. Can you say amen? So God, amen, has called, what are we going to be talking about? The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. We live by faith. When everything fails, our faith is still there. Our faith in God, our trust in God will not fail. I'm going to say it one more time. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those that come to God must first believe he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, back to our story at hand. The disciples were in a meeting. And they couldn't cast this devil out. And I could just see him looking at Jesus. You ask him. No, you do. I don't know why we couldn't cast the devil out. No, I'm just going to. Jesus, let me ask you a question. How come we couldn't cast the devil out? He said, I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting on you <laughs> to ask me that question. And he told them that this kind comes not out but by prayer and fasting. So exactly what is Jesus saying? In order to have strong faith, listen to me and listen to me good, we must dedicate ourselves to the Lord on a daily basis. Every day. We have to rededicate that day to the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I have to rejoice and be glad in it. Can you say amen? I don't know what was going on in the disciples camp, but somebody wasn't praying. Somebody didn't lay the plate down and said, well, we're going to skip that today. We've just been fighting, so let's go get something to eat. Amen. You know, we're we fighting over the carpet in the church. You know, somebody want purple, somebody want red. 
Let's go out and get something to eat and talk about this. Let's discuss it. Amen. We have to renew our minds to the Word of God every day. The devil is waiting for an opportunity to find out when we have just turned our eyes and our focus away from looking at Jesus. That's the only time he can get to. He's not looking for you when you're high in the spirit, when you're going around talking in tongues and amen on your knees, praying and shouting. He said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just let me sit back here and wait. That's what he do. He just lie and wait. He said, no, it ain't, it ain't time yet. The Bible says Paul had the same problem. Romans chapter 12, you don't have to turn there. One and two, you know it. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every day we have to seek to be in God's will. Before we exit our home, before we do anything, we ought to get down on our knees and seek the Lord first. Hallelujah. So that we will be able to carry out and execute the will of God. I'm preaching right now, whether you say amen or not. Amen. We are the saints. There's nobody else to carry out the will of God other than us. God, amen, is not holding secret board meetings and keeping us away from what's going on in the heavenly realm. All we have to do is in the morning is get up and get our marching direction in order. You know, in the service, everybody know it's 6 o'clock. When you hear that horn, you got to fall out in formation. And you know, every so often, there's a couple of people that don't make it. And they still going to call your name. If you come out late and everybody else has received their order, you're still uninformed. Can you say amen? amen? That's why we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's our reasonable service. Now, I have an unusual calling. I have no idea why God would remove me from Memphis and carry me halfway around this world. I have no idea. Amen. But one day when I got down on my knees, I heard the Lord say, I'm going to carry you some way that you've never been. I met a man that came to one of my meetings. And he said, will you come over and help us and disciple our children as we take them overseas? And he said, we'll pay all your fare." And your passport and everything. It's already paid for. But we need you. That's God. That was my first mission encounter. In order to carry out the will of God, all you have to do is present your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God. Now, making an offering and giving an offering is not good enough. That's one of the first lessons that we see in the Bible. Two brothers, Cain and Abel. I wish Prophet was here to tell this. Amen. Cain, he was a tiller of the ground. God bless you, my you friend. You. you have been part of Jane Spite blue. Ministries, a powerful revival service in the city of Memphis, Tennessee at the Spoken Word Church. You can be saved, healed, and delivered by calling on one name, the name of Jesus. Call on Jesus now today, and he will do all three. And I want you to remember this. Whatever your problem is, Jesus.